Hey, we just don't give you canned answered, canned highlights. We, we have actual <laughs> NFL players on this set right here. That is C.J. Anderson. You folks locally know him from Cal, know him from the Broncos, <laughs> and he's a Carolina Panther now. And as I understand it, there's a couple of reasons why guys come home. One, they miss that home cooking. Oh, and all the time. two, they each, each and every one of them have their own football camp to kind of mentor and lead the, the, the stars of the tomorrow in your wake. True? True. All, All right. the way true. So what's going on in the Vallejo area? Um, we got a lot. You know, um, Saturday, July 21st, got our third, my third annual football camp. Um, last two years has been really successful. Last year we had 580 kids all over five, the Bay Area. Five? How, how, do you, how do you corral 580 kids? Uh, a lot of good NFL players, a lot of good <laughs> people on your team. And, uh, you know, we, we, we orchestrated in a way where we try to keep it organized. So, um, you know, this year we're looking for a lot of numbers to still come out. Um, Walk-ups is still open, mm -hmm. you know, for uh, our younger session, 7 to 12, will be from 9 to 11. Registration start at 8. And our high school session, um, registration starts at noon, and we'll go from 1 to 3. So... It's a good camp. It's fun. Uh, I bring a lot of NFL players. I, I kind of don't say who they are um, to protect their privacy and right. things of that nature. Scheduled to appear. Yes. Subject to change. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that too. I can I can imagine having those many kids. I, I tell me if this is typical. <laughs> hey man, I got 500 kids, man. <laughs> I need you down here. Yeah. Am kinda, I right? <laughs> kind of, sorta. I mean, it, it goes back and forth. You go to some of their camps and you mm -hmm. see how many kids that they have. Right. And, you know, they back door and vice versa and help you with yours. And I think it's just a lot of us who do it. Um, you know, we try to give back to our community mm -hmm. as much as we can. Um, and we use our football platform to teach um, different and other ventures out there for our kids. Right, 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 right. As far as the football part goes, I mean, I, I'm sure two things or one or two, uh, among the two things that you really teach is, is proper tackling. They've got, yeah, it, it's, 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 been, it's, it's been almost a... Almost a stain on these youth football because they they just can't they they don't know how to tackle. Well, CJ, it's tough in the league too, and I'm yeah. glad for those ones who who don't know how to tackle in the National Football League to continue <laughs> to keep my job. But um, fundamentals is what my camp is all about, and we teach the basics of football, um, just your simple tackling and blocking, blocking and throwing and catching, and things of that nature. So. Um, tackling is huge, and especially with the game today with, with kids getting bigger, faster, stronger, mm -hmm. keeping their head up. You right. know, uh, there's already the, the CTE thing going on, and, and, and parents, a lot of parents are afraid of contact football. But if you teach it the correct way with the new equipment, um, your son will be safe, and that's something we try to do. So when they do go into football season, that's why we throw our camp so late, because it, it's maybe a week, you know, it's a week before my training camp. But it's literally a week or two before um, the, the youth programs start their own, you know, football season. So we put it try to close so when they walk into football season, they're doing um, exactly what we taught them, what their coaches are teaching them today. I'm glad you brought that up because there's a, there's a youth football team in, in, in Danville, San Maron, they call themselves the Thunderbirds. They're having a hard time. Getting kids to sign up. Yeah. I mean, I mean, is that is that kind of a far ranging? You're not having a problem with your camp, but 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 with that program, I mean, they're really they're really struggling, I, and, and it's full. I'm sure with a bunch of parents going, eh, I don't know. I That's don't tough. Want my kids. What do you say? It's tough. I mean, football is a is a game that teaches way more than just in between the lines and on the field and tackling and 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 things of that nature. So, um, you know, teach you life skills, it teach you adversity, it teach you teamwork and. You know, if, if someone can, can get the parents to see that and also create a safe environment for the kids with the new equipment and things of the nature that, that the game that I love has today, that helps get the kids. But, you know, a lot of these kids is playing video games, and we understand that. So trying to get them active and getting out and, and put them in a camp with a bunch of different NFL players, hopefully inspire those kids to sign up and go play football. Video games are huge. <laughs> Fortnite, I can't get my kids to stop playing that. <laughs> yeah. You know, but but, but I'm, gl I'm glad you brought that up because this, this trip to Google is going to be an eye-opener to some of these kids. I mean, I, I don't care whether you're entry-level been there for a while. I mean, you, you, you work for Google. You're a, yeah, that's the golden egg. Right. It's huge. I mean, the day before the camp on July 20th, we got the trip to Google, taking 40 high school students. Um, there's three high schools in, my, in Vallejo. Um, one of the high schools is, is a private school, so those kids have all the resources right, they right. potentially need. 
But the two public schools with Vallejo High and Jesse Bethel High, the school Got I attended. some Bethel in there? Yeah. Okay, all sure. right. Bethel's for sure in there, for <laughs> sure. If I could take all 40 Bethel kids, I would have. Right. Vallejo would have been mad at me. But usually, everybody knows Google as a search engine. Mm -hmm. You know, who is CJ Anderson? What is CBS? You know, they know they can get a whole bunch of information right. just through the search engine. But Google is way bigger than that. And now our kids um, get an opportunity to, to do something no athlete or no other um, celebrity or you know, famous, big time, however, however you want to label myself. Mm -hmm. No one has walked through the main Google campus, um, you know, frequently with Googlers being, 40 Googlers being paired with our 40 students. All of the Googlers will have different job descriptions and our kids get to ask a lot of questions. So it's going to be interesting. I'm excited myself. With the three years you've been affiliated with your CAM, you see one or two where you kind of see yourself? All the time. As, as, as a young camper? All the time. Then we always say, that guy right there, he has opportunity if he keeps his head on straight right. and things of that nature. And what my foundation, just just like the partnership we have with Google, and that's our first tech tour. And also I have a partnership with YouTube, and it's like hopefully we do Google and YouTube next year. And now we go from Google to YouTube to Twitch, you know, because we know kids loving video games right. these days. And we just make it a big tech rush and show them that, hey, football is fun and and. You know, if you do make it to the National Football League or if you do get a scholarship off football, um, that's successful and that's great. But football is not everything, especially for the inner city youth. So we're letting them know that there are other entities out there where you can be successful. And um, we're trying to give those resources and present those opportunities for our kids. All right. So let's segue and let's talk about your career, young man. I mean, is, first of all, is it... Is it strange to be playing against the very team you scored the winning <laughs> touchdown against in Super Bowl 50, oddly enough, here in the Bay Area? Back home, back home. Um, I don't think so. Uh, it's a business. Right. And I got hit with the business side of things, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, all of us some, at some time in this league, I mean, even Peyton Madden got hit with the business side of right. football. So as great as he is, and, um, you know, Carolina fits well with my game, and, you know, they gave me an opportunity that I just couldn't turn down, and, and I think it's going to be really successful. And, you know, how ironic would it be if we play Super Bowl 53 against my old team? That would be funny. Yeah, that, would be, <laughs> that, that would be something. That, 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 that would stir up some stories. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad you brought up the business side of it because I heard that when, when Peyton Manning played Super Bowl 50, just California taxes alone, he ended up paying almost as much as the bonus money he got for playing in a game. Yeah. People don't realize that. Yeah, I, I love the Bay Area to death, but <laughs> they gotta stop. They got Cali gotta stop taxing us like that. <laughs> they just, but nah, it's um, to be honest, when you're at that point, especially whether it's Peyton Manning or myself, mm -hmm. I was I was in my third year at the time. When you're at that point and you're playing for the biggest game on the biggest stage, you know, of our game, what it gives of the career. Mm -hmm. Um, money already doesn't matter, but the money definitely doesn't matter. I think I think the ring on our finger is a lot better than uh. You know, we'll pay we'll pay all our money to to the, to the tax in California um, if we can have multiple rings on our fingers. Speaking of rings, where is that Super Bowl ring now? It wasn't here today. That's that's this. It's not here. It's in the safety deposit box, okay. but it will be at Google and it will be at the camp. Um, I let kids take pictures with it and stuff. Of course, I, I'm watching them closely like a hawk. Right. Because <laughs> I love my I love my ring, but it'll be at Google and things of that nature. And um, you know, the the, the the ring is in the safety deposit box. Like a magnet, I bet they're <laughs> just, just just drawn to that thing. Hey, you know, with Carolina, I I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that you're in a situation where you're you're sharing a ball in the backfield with a Stanford man. You got to get is Cal Stanford in the background with uh, in, in the backfield with with McCaffrey. How's that? How's that dynamic going to work? That is weird. You know, I played for uh, you know my general manager John Elway was a Stanford guy. Yeah, and we had a lot of um, you know smack talk as we like to talk it, but had a right. lot of conversations about it. You know, he, he he said some things about me, and I just you know I keep <laughs> reminding him of the seven laterals that he doesn't <laughs> like. But um, uh, me and Christian McCaffrey is gonna be a great one-two punch. Uh, we both understand our role and what what we're being asked for by the Carolina Panthers. And, Could be a Mister Inside, Mister Outside, or or a mixer of both. Yeah. So that's that's kind of how we see it, and um, you know, we both we know we can do it all, but we also know our strengths, and we know we can feed off each other in that way, and. Um, you know, he went to Stanford. I went to Cal, though I don't like him on that. Uh, <laughs> take off that red shirt. Other than that, um, we're both Carolina Panthers, and I'm excited for the opportunity to help him grow with his game, his second year, that he can learn a lot from me, and I can still learn a lot from him. Big game week. I can see it now. One of you may have to wear the jersey of the opposing play on, on, on the team that loses for practice. Yeah, I, I hope that's not me. <laughs> I really hope that's not me. So, 
Um, Cal, I'm telling you right here, you got to win the big game. So uh, I know you're watching this because you got to go win the big game because, uh, you know, we're going to put uh, Christian McCaffrey in a number nine Anderson jersey. That's right. Cal. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right. Uh, on to your offense with, with the Panthers. And, and, and I, I know North, North, North Turner. He, he is a great offensive mind. He's your offensive coordinator. And, and I'm sure you, McCaffrey, Cam Newton have gotten together going, like, we can't have our quarterback being the leading rusher. No. On the, we, it just can't happen. And I don't know if you know this. He, his, his numbers were, were, were better than 10 other NFL teams. Yeah, he's a, he's a special player. And, you know, you understand that. And, and Cam, you know, um, super smart, got a really, really good arm, but we know his athletic ability is a big part of his game, and we understand that. Um, like you talk about with Norv Turner, just for me, the history of Norv, with him being in San mm -hmm. Francisco with Frank Gore, and Frank Gore having a successful career under Norv, and LaDamian Thomason and Darren Sproles having a successful career under Norv. And now we get an opportunity where Coach Turner uses all our strengths, including Cam Newton's strengths, but... Um, you know, he puts Cam Newton in a different position um, and utilizes his strengths a lot better with me, you know, DJ Moore, Funches, Torrey Smith, um, and Christian McCaffrey in the backfield. So um, we got to, we, we believe we can be a, you know, number one offense in the league. We got a lot of weapons and, you know, number one leading to him. And, you know, if we do our part, it makes his job that much easier. Okay, a few, a few more. We're going to get out of here. I have so much to talk to you about. Uh, first of all, I, I, it's a good thing you're not playing for the Miami Dolphins, probably because <laughs> on your way over here, the news just came out that the Dolphins, they've got this new rule out that they're, they're going to they're gonna suspend players who protest the anthem. Could be up to four games. Your thoughts on that? That's tough. That's tough to put us in, um, in a predicament like that. Um, knowing the head coach there, I know Coach Case, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's the owner's team. And if the owner wants to just like the, the, the CEO, of, if they want to make a certain business decision, mm -hmm. they have that right with you being an employee. But, um, you know, us as, as athletes, um, you know, no disrespect to any of the owners in the league, but um, us as athletes, you know, we, we've been given a platform where we can utilize it in a certain way of our choosing. And, um, you know, whether that's protesting for the anthem or whether that's giving back to your community, change must start somewhere. And um, the fact that those players are being put in the predicament, um, you know, it kind of sucks because it'd be different. You know, what if those players said, okay, we're just not going to show up and we're going to forfeit and we're going to go 0-16. Right. Now the owner losing money right. and things like that nature. And I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, the Miami Dolphins will do that. But, you know, that will hurt the owner pockets as much as the owner is putting yeah. pressure on the, on, on the players. So um, I, I could have been a Miami Dolphin. That's crazy how you said that because of – Eric Studersville, the running back coach, who was my running back coach in Denver, and Adam Gase, who was mm -hmm. my OC at one time in Denver. But um, I'm glad I'm not in that predicament. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, one of the big, big topics today, Terrell Owens not going to Canton, Ohio, <laughs> full of Hall of Fame. And I, I, I don't know you very, very well, but I, if, if, if you get picked to go to the Hall of Fame, you're going to go to the Hall of Fame. But, but Owens, because he wasn't a first ballot Hall of Famer last year, he's just going to skip this one? Till Till's is unique. He's a unique person. Just knowing him, talking to him a little bit. But he felt like with his numbers, um, you know, he should have been first ballot. I feel like he should have been first ballot. Now, I understand, uh, and I don't know if the, the viewers or fans understand this, but the media chooses who goes That's in true. that Hall of Fame. That's true. Um, the media, it, it could have been someone on that board because of the way T.O. actions was off the field you know, miss him the point of being a Hall of Famer. And, and I think that's wrong because I think what you do in between the lines is what make those numbers, you know, or those statistics or those championships valuable for you to be that first ballot Hall of Fame type player. I mean, he has 153 touchdowns. I think he's, he's third behind Randy Moss and, and, and Jerry Rice. And I think he's second or third in receiving too. I know he's top five in receiving. So, you know, what he did off the field is, was just his personal problem and his personal, you know, things that he was going through. But in between those lines, I'm assuming no matter what team he was on, you can count on 81. And, and for the media to, to, what I say is disrespect or, or slander his name because of some of the things he off the field, mm -hmm. um, it's, just, it's just, you know, it's just insane. For you to be top five, you have the right to feel like he's a first ballot. So he's taking action, no different than Le'Veon Bell want to take action on his contract. He's just taking action on what he feels, and um, we'll see how the NFL act, react off of it. Times change, schemes change, and when I say that, 
what has happened to the running back position in the <laughs> NFL? There used to be every team had the bell cow. He was carrying it 25, 30 times. Not anymore. Yeah, the, game, the game's changed. I, don't, I have no idea. I mean, I grew up watching, you know, out of 32 teams, at least 16 to 20 running backs who, who rushed over well over 12, 1,300 yards. Like, 12 and 1,300 yards was the low end of rushing, and that's what made me want to play running back. And um, there was only nine of us, you know, including myself last year who rushed 4,000 yards. And, you know, people look at that like that's that means nothing. And, um, you know, we do it all. We pass for tech. Like, you know, we block like linemen. We catch like receivers. We think like quarterbacks, and we still have to do our position well too. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy that, you know, our position – is being, um, you know, misvalued in a lot of ways. But when you look at um, a lot of the teams in the National Football League, um, not the ones who have the elite quarterbacks, but, you know, like a lot of us running backs, whether it's big time like Le'Veon Bell or somewhere in the middle um, with, the, with the second or third tier or, or bottom tier one is what we like to call it, and myself or like Leonard Fournette, you know, all, the game, it goes through us. You know, last year having – one in five games, after, you know, we went five and 11. Having 20 carries plus, you know, every time I had 20 carries plus, we won. You know, that was just a statistic. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it was because of my 20 carries, but it was just a statistic. And, right. You know, there is a lot of a Devontae Freeman, Tevin Coleman. There's a lot of us at the running back position who's really good, and we do carry teams, and, you know, we just get misvalued for whatever reason. Well, finally, I mean, you, you don't have the Raiders, you don't have the Niners on your schedule, but, but the, there's a lot of the Niner empire watching. And they, <laughs> CJ, they have lost their minds <laughs> over Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay, okay, I, unbeaten as a start, okay, I get that. But if you could just explain to these people that his, his, his next season, all these teams he's playing against, they got tape on him. Finally. They, finally. They, they, know, they know the strengths and the weaknesses. They can't expect him to keep winning every single game. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. One thing about Jimmy G's, you know, position, I guess I can give Niner fans some hope. Um, I'm not a Niner fan myself. I'm not. So, But one thing I can give to him is uh, Kyle Shanahan is a, is a hell of a football coach and very, very smart, and will put Jimmy G in the right positions. Jimmy G has also learned from not only Tom Brady, but Bill Belichick and, and Josh McDaniels, who I think is another strong office of mine in, in our game today. Um, so he has the tools. Um, but like you said, the tape does come out, and it's not college where, you know, during this time or during the offseason, our coaches is going to recruit, and our coaches are still sending offices today breaking down tape. So um, it'll be interesting to see what the 49ers is, will be doing. I won't pay attention too much because hopefully the Carolina Panthers is taking care of business like we're supposed to. But it'll be interesting to see what Jimmy do. And uh, we're all excited to see where it goes for Jimmy. We're, we're all, as, as a league, as players, we're all excited he's getting this opportunity. Well, I am excited that you were able to just spend some time here on the game day set. They, they, they just continue success as you carry the rock for hopefully another thousand yard season hey. for the, the Carolina Panthers. And I know maybe I, I, you, you're, you're probably glad to be a Panther and glad to not be on the cover of Madden 19. That's <laughs> Antonio Brown of, of the Pittsburgh Steelers because you know what happens to people that are on the cover of that. I think he'll break it. Yeah, okay. Uh, Antonio's a special player. I All think right. He'll break the curse. Okay. Thanks, man. Thank we'll, you. We'll, 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 we'll keep track. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep track of the stats. Thank you. All right. Good luck with that camp.